All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be going over chapter 15, which is going to be genetics, but uh, these problems are going to be taking into consideration how chromosomes are actually inherited. So um, it's further taking the idea that Mendel had with his uh, methodologies on how to solve those problems, but now we have to consider um, how these genes are going to be passed down and how that's going to impact your uh, really your genetics calculations. So um, for the most part now, if we know where the genes are, this is typically how we think of genetics. Um, so it's worth our time to kind of just take a second and revisit uh, a couple of key terms here. And uh, that's going to be that word hereditary. Uh, that means that uh, we're looking at genes and those genes are going to be on a particular chromosome. So each one of these kind of shaded rep, uh, portions represents genes that are known to this chromosome. Um, and remember, um, these alternative forms, these alleles get separated um, in meiosis. Uh, the whole point of meiosis is to reproduce. So um, remember that um, there's multiple genes on a chromosome. And now we're going to look at how that is uh, looking when you study inheritance patterns, because um, it's not always going to be those like three to one or nine, three, three to one ratios when we're doing these genetics problems because of uh, where the genes are actually located. Um, so in the previous video, I stated uh, low-key stands for the location of that gene. So um, whatever species it is, we're, if we have a mapping of that gene or a mapping of the chromosome, we would know where those genes are going to be found. So the main guy that we have to thank for all this, um, or at least the starting of this, was Thomas Hunt Morgan and what he was able to contribute with the, his studying of uh, flies. And he was looking at eye color uh, inheritance. Uh, and he found some stuff uh, that were kind of interesting, um, that eye color uh, was going to be considered a sex link trait. Uh, that means that it was really going to be seen a lot more prominent in males than females. And that was something that was really, really interesting to him. Um, and so we're going to talk about this quite a bit now. Um, really, any genetics problem, any, when you see the word wild type, um, that means it's normal. Um, most of the time, unless they specify, uh, you can make that assumption that assumption that wild type is normal um, and red eyes is going to be uh, actually before I go through this let me just remind you um, of how this is going to look uh, remember that uh, females they're xx okay or males are going to be xy so basically what this tells you is that females when you look at their karyotype they're going to have two x chromosomes right now for males remember that we have one x chromosome that we have from the mom uh, but we also have a y chromosome and the y chromosome is actually a little bit shorter so let's kind of explain real quick on why this matters in terms of these problems well let's take a look here um let's say that eye color is located here if we're studying flies, it's a sex link trait. Um, now, let's say uh, theoretically that we're saying that big R, right, would be uh, dominant. So I'll kind of put this off to the side, uh, and this will help you guys understand the next slide. The big R is red, and we're going to say that that's dominant, and little r is white. And that is recessive. So I can have this fly, this female fly, and she could actually be heterozygous, big R, little r, because she has two X chromosomes. Now, if we looked at the male, um, notice the location of where that eye color is. Okay, I'm just making a, a really simple representation. The Y chromosome isn't going to actually be carrying that gene. So um, let's just say that if this male had this particular gene, you can see why males are a lot more prone to ex be expressing uh, recessive traits on the X chromosome because there's no um, homologous pair. So you want to understand that males are a lot more likely to express them because of the physical length that if this was the, like I mentioned earlier, that would be the Y chromosome. Um, there's no homologous pair to that because it's a physically shorter chromosome. So when you study these uh, problems, uh, typically how we write them, is uh, like this, right? So we cross them like this, where we have the X showing that it's going to be a sex-linked problem. Um, and I want to remind you guys that uh, when you're doing this, is that no allele 
is ever written on the Y chromosome. And the reason why is because like I just mentioned over here, it physically can't carry it. It doesn't have a gene there. So when you write it, hopefully you're able to catch that, okay, if this was the parent generation, um, these could essentially be the genotypes, right? If females could be red-eyed, she'd be homozygous for red, this male would be red. Uh, the mutant was abnormal. Um, now, just because it is a sex-linked trait doesn't mean that females aren't uh, able to express a recessive trait. Uh, they can, it's just a lot more common in males because whatever uh, X chromosome they have, um, they're gonna express the genes on that X chromosome. So uh, just notice here on the Y, uh, when you cross them, uh, no alleles are gonna be carried. So I just wanna make sure that you guys feel okay on how to actually solve these ones. Um, now, Basically, when he mated these red-eyed uh, females with wide-eyed males, um, that was the parental generation. So um, he basically took a mated, uh, he made, took red-eyed females with wide-eyed males. Um, and then in the F1, all of them had red eyes. Um, and that didn't necessarily throw him off too much, but uh, when he mated the F1, um, you would have expected to see that, uh, that three to one ratio, but he didn't, he was seeing uh, this where, all of the white eyes were male. Uh, so that means that none of the females uh, actually were expressing that recessive trait. Uh, and he came up with the conclusion that uh, eye color is linked on the sex chromosome. So basically what we're doing here, this is a cross um, from the F1. So this is what we're looking at here. Um, or excuse me, actually I should say that uh, this was parental. Right? So. If this was your parental, um, he took a wide-eyed male, and then here's the female's genotype. Now, when you do these, uh, I like to cross the X's first. So we go X, 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 uh, and then you cross the R. So uh, we have a big R, little R. So this female would actually have red eyes. This female would have red eyes because she's had her But notice the male would also have red eyes. Um, now. If it says, like in a practice problem, uh, cross the F1 generation, um, and you don't know how to do that, well, it's pretty simple when you look at the genotypes of the parents. So if you looked here, all the females had the same genotype, they're heterozygous, and all the males were red-eyed. So if I did a Punnett square like this, um, if I took it and figured out the uh, my F2 generation, right, because all these are the F1 and I want to get my F2. So if I took a male from the F1 and I crossed him with a female, um, you can already kind of start to see the results of what's going to happen here, um, that this female, she's heterozygous. So like I said, I like to cross the Xs first and the Ys. That way I just keep track of Where's my male and female? And then I just cross the uh, genes for the uh, eye color. So this female, she would be big R, big R, so she's red. This female would be big R, little r, so she's red. Uh, this male would be red. Uh, and this female, or excuse me, this male would be white. So that's where the white-eyed, um, if we look at it in terms of uh, percentages or that ratio is three to one, um, but this male would actually have white eyes and it's the only um, sex uh, that is possessing that genotype, or excuse me, phenotype. So um, that's basically what he figured out. So anytime you're doing a sexing problem, you need to make sure that you understand that uh, you're crossing the alleles. So you have basically a simple monohybrid cross, but make sure you're attributing to your X's and Y's. And no really common mistake that I see students make a lot is they always want to put an allele here on the Y and remember that they physically can't carry that allele. So um, let's uh, take a look at this FRQ. And this one is going to be kind of intense because it's basically a chi-squared problem uh, with sex-linked uh, characteristics. So let's kind of tackle this one. And it's actually not too bad. So it says in fruit flies, the phenotype for eye color is determined by a certain locus. Okay, um, And it says big E represents the dominant allele. Little e indicates the recessive allele. So they're telling you that uh, it says the cross between a male the wild type, which is red, uh, and a female wide-eyed produced the following offspring. Uh, so here's your F1. Um, 
And then here's the F2. So there's a few things about this that uh, really should be jumping out at us. Um, it's asking us to determine the genotypes of the original parents. And then uh, for B, we're going to do a chi-squared test. So um, let's uh, highlight a couple of things here. So this should be jumping out at you, um, that the wide-eyed male um, are the only ones that are expressing that phenotype. No females express that recessive one. Um, and all of the wild types are females in the F1. In the F2, you get this, what looks to be like a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for A first, and then we'll do the chi-squared test right after. So let's talk about this first. Um, so I like to write this off to the side, that uh, big E is wild, and they're telling you that that's dominant. And the little E uh, is going to be white. That's recessive. Right. And wild type in this case is red. So um, let's kind of figure out how to do this. Um, the fact that you're seeing this show up where all of the uh, males are expressing that recessive phenotype and no females express it, um, that's a pretty big indicator that um, it's a sex link trait that doesn't just happen randomly, especially with a population of about 100. So when you're doing this, let's um, try to make a prediction. It says you're crossing a male wild type. So the male was actually red um, and the female was wide-eyed. So let's double check with the parents. Um, we're gonna make the assumption that it's a sex linked one. So before I put my alleles here, um, I'm gonna have XX for the female uh, and then I'm gonna have XY for the male. Now it tells us that the male was wild type. So we got to account for these alleles. So if this was a parent, uh, this would be the genotype of the dad, right? Because we have the big E is wild type, which is dominant, that dominant red. Um, but it also told us that uh, in the fruit fly, the mom, um, she was wide-eyed. So she would actually have the genotype of a little E, little E. Now, let's go ahead and do this Punnett score really quick just to verify to see if it's going to match up with this. Um, and then we can kind of take it from there. So let's at least see if we're getting close to these results. Now, I'm putting this female over here. So we cross it. Again, I like to do the X's and Y's first. Um, you can do it any way you want, but this is just kind of habit for me. Um, so now I'm gonna just cross the E's. So this female would be wide-eyed, heterozygous for Y. This female would also be wide-eyed heterozygous. So all of the females, there's only one genotype that the females could actually be. Um, they're all going to be red-eyed uh, and they all have the same genotype. They're heterozygous. But let's look at the uh, the males. Uh, notice that the mom, the initial parent, uh, she had white eyes uh, and that's according to what the problem is telling us. So we can put a little e here, uh, a little e here. And so far it looks like this is matching up. Um, with the data that's uh, presented to us. So in the F1, um, all of the females are wild type and all of the uh, uh, males are going to be wide-eyed. So determine the genotype of the original parents. Well, uh, it's pretty set in stone that uh, this would be your answer to that one. Um, explain your reasoning. Um, and we did a punish score to prove it. So uh, just prove, provide that explanation. Uh, if you got a problem like that, that I needed you to explain it, you just would have to actually explain it in your punish score findings um, that the males get that X chromosome from the mom. And the only allele that the mom had was that recessive one. So um, now let's move on to part B, uh, where it's asking us to do a chi-score test for the F2 generation. Uh, determine what you're testing for. Uh, if it's sex linked, uh, well, don't worry about that part because I'll walk you through your null hypothesis in a second. Um, but before we do that, let's, uh, I'm going to cross these. Um, so basically, what this means now to get your F2 is I took a male and a female from here, and I'm going to cross those. And this is going to be my result. So we're assuming that the parents were, uh, that's their genotype. We, we now figured out that it's sex link. So I, I have to keep these genotypes now. So I'm going to take a female and a male from the F1 and I'm going to cross them. Now it doesn't matter which one, I have to have a male and a female. So, and they're all the same, meaning all the females genotypes are the same, all the male genotypes are the same. So 
I'm going to cross them over here and then we can uh, see what we got. So I'm taking a male that's wide eyed and I'm going to cross this guy over here with the female that was heterozygous. So she is having that genotype. So now when I cross these, let's see what our prediction is going to be. All right. So crossing the E's here, this female, whoops, would actually be heterozygous. So she's heterozygous. This female would be wide-eyed. I have a male that's white, or excuse me, wild type. And then I also have a male that's white. So so I have really a nice one-to-one to one to one ratio. Um, so that's important. Um, now we can kind of figure out uh, what our chi-square test is gonna be. So, and again, all of this is actually your F2 results, okay? Now, remember, anytime you do a chi-square test, especially with genetics, um, this is going to help you get your um, expected value. So, um, remember all of these that they give you in the problem are your observed values. So, we can now do a chi-square test, and you're given the equation. So, the chi-square test is going to be equal to the summation of observed minus expected squared over expected. Um, now, Let's figure this out first in terms of uh, what our total population is going to be. So um, how do you get your, um, all of these, like I mentioned a second ago, these are all your observed, um, but how do you get your expected? Okay. Well, first I got to figure out what's the total population. So um, to do that, I'm basically going to take the total population here. So if I did 23 plus 31, plus uh, 22, plus 24, uh, this gives me a total of 100. So it's a nice, easy number. Now, in terms of solving this, um, let's figure out what is the expected for uh, wild, um, we'll do wild male. All right, now to do this, we can, we have to, absolutely look at our this in purple. So what's our expected for wild male? Well, we got to look to our punnett square uh, for the F2. What was the expected for the wild male? Well, all of these, it's a one to one to one to one ratio or one out of four would be this genotype, one out of four, this genotype, one fourth, one fourth. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our population, which was 100. And again, that 100 is coming out of the total population for the F2. And I'm going to multiply that by one fourth or 25%. And that's going to give me a value of 25, right? Now I can do this for each one. They're all going to be the same because it's a one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. So if I were to do the wild female for my F2, um, it would be the same setup. It'd be 100. So 100 times a fourth. And that would also be 25. So all of these values are my expected. And I got two more. Um, I have white male, I should say wide-eyed male. That would also be 25. And then I'll do it down here. So wide-eyed female, that would also be 25. So all of these values now are gonna be my expected. And here's my observed, okay? Now, I kind of run into an issue here um, with your guys' null hypotheses, um, depending on how comfortable you are with writing them. Um, the null hypothesis in this case is not necessarily going to be written uh, to try to disprove it. Um, so let me kind of clarify this. Um, so our null, because you always need a null hypothesis to compare your data. Uh, the null in this case um, needs to be something related to sex linked traits. Um, now, we made this, we're pretty confident that it is a, a sex linked trait, right? We've done our Punnett squares. These are our predictions. We have our expected value. Um, and 
before we do that, I'm going to write a null hypothesis that I'm making the assumption that I think I'm going to fail to reject, meaning, I mean, kind of accept. You can't say accept, really. But I need to write it in a way that if I fail to reject it, it makes sense. So I'm going to write it this way, and I'll talk about it at the end. Um, my null hypothesis would be that uh, I color in flies. Um, is okay now the way i set this up here um is critical so the eye color in flies is not autosomal okay now i'm writing that in the way that i'm hoping uh, to fail to reject it because if i'm saying that it's not autosomal um, remember, autosomal traits are going to be traits that are going to be in all your chromosomes besides your sex uh, chromosomes. So this makes sense. Now you can write it in a couple of different ways, but this is the way that I'm going to write it uh, to do my chi-square calculation on. So um, over here, uh, let's kind of set it up now. We can solve it. Lots of room. So let's figure this one out. So chi-squared is equal to the summation of your observed minus expected squared over expected. So now I'm just gonna kind of be going back and forth. So I'll do the first one. Um, let's kind of just go in order. So wild type male um, was gonna be 25. So, or excuse me, 23. That's our observed. And what our expected for that was 25. So 23 minus 25, square that over 25. So that's my first one. Plus, because it's the summation, I have my next data entry, which is going to be 31. Um, so this was going to be 31 minus 25 squared over 25 plus the next one, 22 minus 25 square that over 25. And the reason why I'm not having to go back and always double check my expected, I should be, but they're all the same. Now you might have some chi squares that your expected won't always be the same, so just be careful with that. Now the last data entry I have to do is the white-eyed female. Uh, so she was uh, we had 24 in the F2, uh, so 24 minus 25 squared that over 25. Okay. Now let's kind of. Uh, walk you through uh, what this number is gonna tell you. Now, I'm not gonna walk through how to solve it. It's just some pretty simple algebra. Uh, but if you do this correctly, you should get about a chi-square value of 2.0, okay? Now, right here, uh, this is our degrees of freedom, or our, I should say our critical values of the chi-square. Um, before we do that, we gotta remember our degrees of freedom, or our DOF, is our number of outcomes minus one. So this is where we have to be a little uh, understanding on what where this is coming from. So our degrees of freedom, um, we had four outcomes. That's what we were actually analyzing. We had wild male, wild female, white, white and male, and then white, uh, white uh, female. Okay. So basically, in this case, we had four outcomes. So our degrees of freedom that we're going to be using in this case um, is actually going to be three, right? Because we actually had four outcomes minus one. So our DOF is actually going to be three. Um, so that's your DOF or our degrees of freedom. Now, a lot of people get here and they think that the problem is done, but uh, you've done a lot of work, but that this is what we're looking at. So our degrees of freedom is three. We're always going to be using the 0 0.05 probability. And then that gives us this value, your critical value. So according to this, and it's really tough to see, but it, that critical value using three degrees of freedom is 7.82, okay? Now I'll remind you guys that if your chi-square value is greater than your critical value, that means you have to reject the null. If your chi-squared value is less than your critical value, you fail to reject. All right. So 
let's look at what we have so far. Um, our chi squared value we got was two. Our critical value is going to be 7.82. So we fall in this realm of failing to reject. So um, and reject what? Uh, it's our null hypothesis. So our null that I wrote over here is that I color in flies is not autosomal. And I am failing to reject that. Okay. Uh, which really means uh, in a weird kind of a backwards way of thinking is that this tells me that the inheritance pattern of this, um, it's not following that simple Mendelian genetics, that three to one uh, ratio. Uh, and that the gene inheritance pattern here um something else is going on and in the sense that this is sex linked so um that's our null and that's where we use the chi squared test to actually figure this one out so we failed to reject that uh null hypothesis because our chi squared value um was actually less than your critical value so that's what the chi squared test tells you uh and this is a genetics problem based on that so just to kind of recap this video this was just kind of an introduction of how to solve sex and traits, uh, kind of what they were, and then a chi-squared problem. Next video, we'll sum up chapter 15.